Hello everyone, Linda Israel here and welcome to my live premiere that is premiering on November the 19th, had to think about it, at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. I will be in the chat with you so you'll see me recorded and I can answer questions live in the chat. So if you have questions, definitely speak up. Hey, if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And of course, if you're watching this as a replay, love to have your feedback or questions, you can use the comment box down below. Also know that you can look in the description box if you click on show more just below the video. You'll see links to all the products that I use as well as my social media connectors, including my Facebook groups. One of those being the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. So today I thought I would kind of focus on creating a journal page maybe out of things you may already have and embellishing them. For example, I've got some book pages here. I've torn apart a book and I glued two pages together right now in front of me and what I want to do right off the bat is change the look of this so you may have a whole bunch of book pages or some junk mail but you don't really want that as your foundation you want to change it so what we're going to do is we're going to spray it with some tattered angels I just grab a little box so that when I spray it somewhat stays contained into the box and I've got a couple of colors here one of them is deep purple vibe this is from the positive vibe tattered angels glimmer mist set there's a set of six colors and then this is out to sea blue skies that is in the out to sea set of tattered angels so if you've got a dark purple a dark dark pink something like that and then a teal a blue uh, maybe indigo there's a couple of the colors and i have some individual colors in my shop so what i want to do is spray this so i'm going to grab a little bit of this blue and spray it all over and then i'll do the purple vibe and I'm not doing as much as the purple vibe because it's such a strong color. And then I'm going to come back with the out to sea blue skies and add just a little bit more. And if you'll notice, it starts to change and shift and blend just a little bit. So give it a moment to kind of gel, to do its thing. And then what I'll do is use my heat tool to dry it. So I'm tilting this back and forth, getting that paint because it's a glimmer mist paint that has some beautiful mica and shimmer to it and we'll let this dry with a heat tool and then I'll be right back. So there's my page after I've let it dry with tattered angels. So I want to make sure that this is thoroughly dry and you can do that with a heat tool or let it dry for a while so that you know it's dry. I like that it crinkles. Now the next step is I have this large brocade stamp that is new in my shop and I've got some Versamark ink and I will ink this up and I'm going to show you a technique that if you have a large stamp like this, especially a background stamp, and you're having a hard time getting a good impression. Maybe you don't have a stamp positioner like a Misty, but you do have the stamp and you're trying to figure out how do I get a good impression? Well, we're going to leave this stamp face up. I will lay my piece of paper on top of the rubber stamp and make sure that I don't move it and I will use my brayer to press the paper into the stamp. So it's important that you don't let that paper shift or you'll end up with a blurred image. All right, so now you can't see that image right now, but it is on there. And I've got some embossing powder because I wanted the look of this gilding glossing powder. It's a very pretty gold glitter and I've got a little spoon in a container and I'm just going to sprinkle that over the image. All right so I've added the embossing powder so now I need to heat it up so let me grab my pan. So I like to lay it on like a baking sheet or cooking sheet or a 
a piece of cardboard wrapped in aluminum foil because it gets really hot and I don't want to touch it. And I've got a plastic mat under here, so I don't want it to melt. So I'm going to use my heat tool. It's not a hair dryer. It's going to get really hot. Now, when you're using embossing powder, you want to make sure you keep the heating tool moving so that you're not scorching your embossing powder. Also, you don't really want to breathe in the particles. I don't care what brand it is. Just have a little bit of safety. So if you know you're going to do a lot of embossing, you might want to wear a face mask to prevent from breathing in those particles like what a painter would wear. I know I'm not going to do a lot of embossing, so I try to keep my face far away from my project, project while I heat emboss this. As you will see, it will start to change colors from the more dull color to a little bit more shiny and gilded look. It's going to be hot, so you don't want to touch it right away, and you don't want to touch the pan. So I'll just lift this off and set it on my table for a moment. All right, so now you're going, what are you going to do with that? Well, I'm going to set it aside for a moment. We're going to come back to it. Now, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll grab a whole bunch of book pages and then I will do one of two things. I'll either just spray them directly with Tattered Angels or I will take some acrylic paint and I'll grab like a gift card or something and scrape the paint across the page so that it's covering up most of the text. That way when I go to spray the Tattered Angels on top, it kind of obscures it. You'll see it just slightly underneath there. I've done that with this book page here and I've got a page out of a Bible. I usually get large dictionaries or large family Bibles, a reference books that I know aren't going to have maybe language that you don't want to see in some of your projects. And that's what I've chosen here. And I'm going to take this piece of paper and I want to adhere it down to my foundation, which is just a book page, to kind of show that you know we can make our own patterns, if you will. So I'm just kind of looking at this. This has a little bit of some crusty bits on the edge. We're going to cover those up. I wanted to lay that down there. And I think what I'll do is trim this off so that it's eight and a half inches. So I've trimmed that down just a little bit and I'll put it pretty much in the center of my page. So I'm going to glue this down. I'll just use Aline's tacky glue to glue it in place. I just trimmed off the excess. I've cut my page just a little bit too short, you know, just trim it up. It's okay. Earlier before the I started recording, I sprayed this Bible page with the positive uh, Vibes set deep purple vibe and I just want to make some strips to go on the side here so I'm just going to look at this and say all right I think I want to trim off this piece here and then cut a little strip that'll fit right here all right so I've got a strip that I'm going to put but I don't need it to come all the way down to the bottom of my page so I'm going to come back to this embossed piece that I made just a little while ago and what I want to do is find the center of the image so I'm just going to kind of crease it and then tear somewhat jaggedly and then I'll tear across the top here and then I want to fold down the side so I'm just going to fold this side over and then I'll fold up the bottom. Basically, I'm folding in where there's no embossing, so you won't see that. And I will cut that corner off. And I'll see if I need to make any adjustments. And this is going to go in the corner here. I'll do the same on the other side. So I will rip it and then fold it. I am cutting the corners off at an angle and then this is going to go here and here. So now let's see. If I fold this in half, is that long enough? Yes. And yes. So I'm just going to fold this in half and tear it in half. And I'm going to place this right down the side. And this is going to go over it. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these two pieces in place. I'll add some distress ink to the edges of this piece because you'll kind of see it a little bit. 
All right, so now I'm just going to glue these down. And I know this page is upside down. I plan to do some more embellishment to it. So I'm not really worried about what it looks like. So a lot of people ask me about making journal pages the way that I do, which is I like to make my pages flat and then I will fold them in half and put them into a journal. Now, if you already have a ready-made journal that you're working with and you really don't want to take it apart, well then just lay your spread out on your desk and work within the book. You could also do like I am and create your page and then cut it to fit inside your journal and then paste it down. All right, so those are gonna go there. This is gonna go here. This is kind of plain and undecorated in the middle, so let's change that. I have the Leafy Branch stamp and some archival ink and jet black. And what I wanna do is stamp down this purple strip. And I'm just alternating my stamp just a little bit to kind of give a little variety of texture. I have the December Stencil Club stencil, and I want to make a pattern here in the middle. So let me grab some Distress ink, and then we're going to blend on top of this. I have Dusty Concord and an oval blending brush. So I'm just going to pick up some color and then come in here. And basically where the blue portion of the paper is, I'm going to add some stencil design. You can check your work to see how it's looking if you want it to be a little bit darker. I just want a subtle pattern on here. So can you see that real subtle pattern that's in there? You get that nice shimmer and that's in the background. I think I'm going to go ahead and stamp this leafy branch right across the top. And then let's stamp it down here in the middle. So this piece is going to go here in this corner. And this piece is going to go here. In this corner so let's distress those edges and then we'll adhere it down all right so let's put these down as tuck spots or corner pockets i'm just laying an acrylic block on there to help hold that down while the glue dries so far i've used book pages i've used some tattered angels glimmer mist i've used a stencil and a rubber stamp to start decorating my page so it's all coming together see how the leaves are just poking out in between here we've got the leaves growing across the page we've got this beautiful brocade embossing in the corners i think it's coming together really nicely i'll move this out of the way just a little bit i have a scrap of some purple cardstock and I know it's not the same color, but I think it'll be a fun color to use. And I've got the rubber stamp Dare to Dream. And I'm going to stamp that with jet black on this purple paper. So there it is. I think I want to just tear this out. So I'm just going to take my fingers and tear around this. And if you don't have scraps of purple paper, but you have inks or paint, paint your paper. So I think this would look good up here on this corner. So I've got another saying. Let me see. I don't know if I left enough of this piece of paper that I could stamp it. But I think I can barely make it fit. It may be hard to tear. And this one is worth remembering is the name of it. Today is that tomorrow you dreamt about. Make it a yesterday worth remembering. And again, I'm just going to rip... So that way, if you don't stamp it straight, you won't be able to tell because you just tore around it and it covers that up. So I've just tore around it. So now I'm going to use my Distress Ink and go around the edges. And that's going to go on this side. Okay, I'm liking how this is coming together. I've got a couple of butterflies that I want to put on here. And they kind of, they look good, I think, kind of just sitting on there. We could put them maybe at an angle in the corners like that. I don't think it needs another layer. You know, you can add other layers if you like, but I think this time I'm just going to do that layer. So let's glue this all down. The butterflies that I'm putting in the corner are the, I think it's called the butterfly large. 
that I have in my shop. I stamped it onto some cardstock. I colored it with a paintbrush using Tattered Angel's Glimmer Mist. And then I came back over it with some Tulip Dimensional Fabric Paint. I've shown this in other videos because it's inexpensive, $4.99 for this large four ounce bottle. And it dries clear, but with a sparkle on top. I've gone around the edges with Distress Inks. I'm liking how this is coming together. It's got some beautiful shimmer on there. So we need some journal cards to put in here. Let me see what I have. I have a couple of this lavender colored paper. See how it fits on in there. I like that color. All right, so I'm just looking at it to see how it comes together. I like that difference of color there, nice writing space. So let's go around the edges with some Distress ink, and then I will figure out what I'm gonna put on top. Okay, I think what I wanna do is I wanna stamp on here this leafy vine, so it kind of brings back the pattern that we've already used once. And I'm gonna do it on this corner, so kinda of come down here and across like that. And then I've got the smaller butterfly that I thought would look really good, just stamped on top. So if we look at this, it should fit right down inside our little pocket, and then it's just sticking out. So it's got a ready to go little journal card. So let's do that again. So we'll do it on this corner, and that will go on this side. I like that. All right, so I'm gonna flip it over and let's decorate the other side. All right, so I have a different page that I painted and sprayed, and then here's one I was testing out if I liked the way the uh, paper would look with it stamped. So I think what I wanna do is trim this so it fits, so I'm going to lay this across, and I'm basically going to repeat the same concept that I did on the other side. It's just going to have a little bit different color in the middle. So let's go ahead and glue this down and get it going. So I want to make sure that I have it the right side up. So I'm going to flip this over, put this right here in the middle. And then I should, in theory, have these little strips that'll fit in the corners. I'm going to use the same stamping technique. Since these are already stamped, I'm going to stamp on top and then gl glue these together. I'm grabbing my stencil that I used on the other side, the same Distress Oxide, so and just repeat it. I like it. I'll just glue these down. I've already put some Distress Ink on here. Are you seeing how, you know, I'm not using scrapbook paper. I'm using book pages that I have altered to fit my theme or desire of what this page should look like. I made a couple of pockets like on the other side earlier, so I'll just go ahead and glue those into place. I've got another scrap of purple paint and I have a couple of more stamps. This one says, uh, this is by Bankhead. I think you might like this saying. Well, let me get it stamped and I'll read it to you. It says, only good girls keep diaries, bad girls don't have time. <laughs> so, is that true? Do we know? And then I'll flip this around and I've got another saying here. I see a thing more clearly in dreams than the imagination awake. And that's from Leonardo da Vinci. All right, so let's rip these out and we'll glue them down onto our page. Apply some Distress inks to the edges. So our page is coming together. I need some type of embellishment to go in here. So I don't have other stamps prepared that I've stamped and colored. So I'm just looking here. These are all birds. Maybe there's something in here. Some little birds there. That's kind of cute. I've got a journal card that's a multiplication type thing. So I think that would look good over there just for variety. So what do you think? Do you think you could turn some book pages into some beautiful background papers that you can use in a junk journal? And then I have from the 
Dragonfly Delight. These are both from Calico Collage, these little squares. And then this one's from the Dragonfly Delight. And I've added some Tulip Dimensional Glitter Paint. And that's going to go in this pocket. So what I'll do is just take this page and fold it in half. I think I'll do it this way. Kind of guide it just a little bit. And when I have a stack of enough pages, I'll stack these together to turn it into a journal. So I hope that you liked that idea. So we use the same concept on both sides. We just use a few different colors on here to make it a nice variety. You like it? All righty. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial that you're inspired to get out those book pages, transform those into a junk journal page, and that way you can truly show I'm using junk, which are book pages in this case, rubber stamps, stencils, a few digital images. That's why I put the digitals on one side and use the stamped on the other. So you have a variety of ways that you can put it together. I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time where I create journals live and show you different techniques on making pages, sometimes covers, tassels, just depends on the particular day. And on Thursdays, I do a live premiere like we did today and I will share techniques, whatnot. So I'm hoping to share some more techniques like this that we can turn into a journal. And hey, if you're not doing this, make an example. You know, you may watch one of my tutorials and you like the idea. Well, don't just walk away, make something. Even if it's just taking a couple of book pages, you may not color them right then, but you may tear the corners and put them down, write notes, hey, put a stamped image on here, over stamp on there, write some notes and then make yourself a sample journal that you can refer back to when you want ideas. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.